Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I am actually looking at my fingernails right now and considering it is like Sunday Snowmageddon day in Chicago, part 17. I think we're supposed to get eight more inches of snow. And uh, right now, I think yesterday they said, I'm supposed to go out and meet my mom. This looks kind of weird, this way this is. Um, okay. Um, I was supposed to go meet my mom for a movie yesterday. And I actually ended up having to turn around because they said something like, oh, you know, maybe an inch of snow. See, no, that's not even. And maybe an inch of snow. And, and so I ventured out and the roads were so bad. I don't know what the deal is. If they're just not um, plowing and salting fast enough or if it's just that we're just getting so much snow and crap that you can't keep up with it. Um, and really that's... I was talking to somebody about this the other day and I, you know, they were like, oh, I'd never live in cold or I hate snow. It's not that I hate snow and it's not that I really have a problem with cold. I am moving to Florida, but it's not really that, oh, I can't stand cold. The thing that gets um, annoying in Chicago, I've said this before, is just A, outside of situations like this, it just lasts for a long, long time and you kind of just get, it's easy to get down and, and um, you know, it's not that it's severe, although the weather this week is going to be severe. I think um, Tuesday it's like wind chills of minus 50 and the high is going to be minus 20 degrees. So, I mean, yeah, that's a little extreme, but it's not really that I don't, I love snow. In fact, I mean, there have been several uh, Christmases the past couple of years, um, actually lots of years, where we were going, oh, I wish we had a white Christmas and, you know, we didn't get snow until January or February. So it's not the snow, but um, I will say it's just, it feels like it, it's not stopping. I feel like I live in Montana or something right now. Um, but anyway, I went to go meet my mom for a movie yesterday and I got part of the way and I'm like, this is just as bad. What was it? Christmas Day. Christmas Day was the same way. They said, oh, we're going to get, you know, one to two inches and it ends up being so much more. And then the roads are just horrible. And again, I made the ridiculous poor mistake, in my opinion. Um, I've always had an SUV the past several years. And when I got my car, um, when was that? 2000 and, um, it was when I was quitting my job. So 2011. Um, and I'm like, well, maybe I should be smart. And if I could save 100 bucks a month, um, I'll get a sedan. You know, I thought I was being a good financial decision maker at the time because, um, you know, I'm running a startup and I'm not paying myself a lot. I didn't even pay myself for probably a year, maybe even more. Um, so I thought, well, I'll downgrade and whatever. I regret that decision <laughs> every, especially right now because it, like right now, my neighbor is, he has a sedan and he actually got stuck just trying to back out of his driveway because yeah you can just I mean I got to the point where and, and it didn't even seem like there was a lot of snow right on the um, on the on whatever driveway not sidewalk you know roads but there'd be times where like this car you just feel like you're skidding like you can't even steer the car it's it's swerving that much my mom's like put something heavy in your trunk that'll hold it down I'm like mom really that's not gonna help the, the wheels are not gripping they're they're wheels um, whatever, I know nothing about cars. All I know is I'm certainly never going to not have an SUV again. I just like SUVs too. It's not just about the weather. I digress. Um, anyway, I am sitting here looking at one of my broken nails, realizing I should have gotten my nails done Saturday, and that's probably why they're all starting to break and whatever, because I'm due for a fill. And now, understanding that we're going to have this crazy weather and that Tuesday is going to be bad, I have a feeling I'm going to be ripping these off. Um, why am I telling you that? No idea. Um, anyway, one of the things that I'm doing right now is listening to some of the rest of my... Ah, sorry. Um, some of the rest of my um, Tony... Um, they're not DVDs, they're CDs. But um, one of the things that came up in my head while I was listening to this and um, the very fact that I'm making the time and listening to this and, and walking through it after I bought it. Remember I told you guys I bought this this set. Um, so there's three things of this. 
Um, I bought it before, so probably October, and I'm just really getting through it and doing it all now. Why? And that's what I wanted to focus on, this little topic here, for this video. And I'm going to be doing probably a lot of videos, maybe even shooting a lot of videos today on several different topics um, that are really topics I've uh, learned a lot about, figured out a lot of stuff about myself, and it's just, I've been telling you guys in every video, and forgive me if I'm being redundant, but I'm telling you that, you know, for the first time in a long time, I just see things so clearly, I have no doubts um, about the future, about what I can do, and, and a lot of that has just been self-evaluation, figuring stuff out about me, what's limited me in the past, um, and, and developing a blueprint. I mean, Tony uses that phrase a lot, and it stuck with me for so many, for so many other areas of my life, that word blueprint. You know, you have to think about it. It's like when you want to lose weight or gain muscle or both or compete in a show or run a half marathon, you have to, a blueprint is a plan. It's something that you follow. When they build a house, they have a blueprint for what that house is going to look like, what they have to do and what in what order, where the electric goes in, where the water goes in, where the plumbing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a blueprint. There's a plan. You don't just wing it. So much of what I'm figuring out about myself is that you know, I've referred to this before, you can have a lot of ideas and hopes and dreams and, and desires, right? You know, you can always say, oh, I wish I had abs like that, or I'd love to get back down to the size I was here or there. Um, but if you just think it and wish for it, I mean, that's just like a feeling, right? You're not doing anything about it. And when I shot my other vlog, I said, I said, you know, the other vlog I put up, a couple days ago about goals. I was like, if you're like me, you're probably hearing me introduce, you know, this video topic and saying, oh, I'm going to talk about goals. And you're like, I've heard that. Here's the thing, guys. So much of what I'm figuring out, the very fact that I have this program in my hand, the very fact that I even went to a Tony Robbins thing is so against everything that old Kelly would have would have ever done. I would have looked at, if, if anybody I knew had gone to that kind of stuff, I'd have been like, just one of those people. Here's the thing, I know enough about myself now and I know enough about reading and learning and really evaluating yourself to know that when you do that, when you're skeptical and you make fun of something, quite often it's because you have doubts about it, obviously, and you're scared of really diving in for whatever reason. And, you know, I, I mentioned this to you before, Sherry and I were texting back and forth and she said, I don't know that I necessarily fear this or fear that. And I said, fear is more a feeling when I say fear holds you back or you're really scared of doing something. You know, it doesn't need, need to be necessarily that you're like, oh, I, I don't want to open the door. I'm scared of it. No, it means that you have um, the way that I'm defining it. It's like you have trepidation about something. You are uneasy about it. You, you don't want to do it. You're avoiding it because um, you're scared of it. You know what I'm saying? I, I could be scared of getting on the scale in front of a bunch of people. Does that mean that I'm literally terrified and my heart is beating a million miles a mile? No, it's more a tremendous sense of discomfort. But that's the way I, I'm saying fear, right? And usually we have fear of consequences. We have fear of failing. We have fear of, some people have fear of success. You might go, why would you be scared of being successful? If you really start digging down and asking yourself questions, you'll figure stuff out about yourself. One of the things that, that I wanted to focus on in this video, because I remember saying it's so good that I'm not distracted, and I think one of the things he was talking about in this uh, first CD was um, procrastination or whatever. And I've talked about this before, and I joke about it with myself. I say I'm such a procrastinator. And, and that in and of itself, that's a separate topic, you know, calling yourself certain things, saying, you know, I, I'm working with my mom on this. She'll go, oh, Kelly, you know, I'm so bad. I, I you know, I'm just, I, I don't have it in me. I'm, I'm really bad at, at following through. And I'm like, no, why don't you start talking about yourself differently and start saying that, well, you know what, in the past, 
I haven't done this, but now I'm changing those habits. Because when you start to talk about yourself, instead of saying, oh, I'm a failure, I've never been able to lose weight, you know, I'm fat, I'm, you know, I'm a procrastinator, I'm bad with money, you know, no one ever likes me, I'm not, I'm never, uh, I never get asked out. You know, don't think that's a bunch of hoo-ha when people say negative self-talk has an effect. It does have an effect because when you start to not have negative self-talk, when you start to think about yourself differently and carry yourself differently and you stand differently instead of being like this and, you know, being shy and, you know, standing off in a corner by yourself. If you walk into a room like this, it's, it's much different. And don't joke about this. This isn't about sticking your boobs out or whatever. This is about being proud of who you are and not having to worry about what other people think. There's a lot of, um, concepts that I just threw out there that I'm going to do separate videos on um, because this is stuff I figured out and once I figured it out and I started looking at myself differently, the way I look at myself, the way I view myself, it started to change the way I think other people, the way I view other people and the way I, I am viewing how they view me. I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself, so trust me when I say, but it's damn awesome. I'm telling you this. I encourage you to do the work on yourself. It doesn't mean you have to buy, you know, this program or go to Tony Robbins, get a different book or, or maybe just listen to me Babylon. I'm going to certainly be sharing a lot of, um, the other books that I've read that other people have recommended to me that made a difference in my past. And then sometimes I reread them, um, at a different time and they've made a bigger impact on me and my life then. So that'll be up on, on my blog on kellyalexa.com. Soft plug. Um, the main point I wanted to say today, and I've gotten almost 12 minutes into this video before talking about it, is um, distraction. Now, some of you are going to laugh and go, the very fact, Kelly, that you're not even um, talking about the topic until 12 minutes in, that's just the way I am. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the fact that I'm chatty Kathy. I'm fine with the... F uh, I thought that was somebody I knew. I'm fine with the fact that um, I over-explain and, and whatever. Um, it is what it is. There's certain things I'm not trying to morph myself into someone else. The thing about distraction is it's very easy for all of us to get distracted, whether it's in our fitness journey, in our work, um, in, in taking care of our house, in, in everything. And when you're distracted and you don't allow yourself to really focus on one thing at a time, that's when stuff starts to spiral out of control. I certainly, the more I evaluated, I told you guys, so much of, of this change and, and um, self-evaluation particularly happened the latter part of this year because I just felt, let's use snow as an example, I felt like I was buried under 20 feet of snow all the time. No idea how to get out and just, just feeling like there was no way out. Well, guess what? When you start to work backwards and you start to go, okay, you feel this way, why do you feel this way? And then you start to go, oh, well, why do you feel like you have so much work? You know, blah, blah, blah. What are you doing every day? And, and why do you have that? And then you start to look at things and you go, oh, well, this is why I'm stressed out about this. This is why there's so much work. Or if you say, okay, what's, what, are, what are a list of five solutions for you being overwhelmed at work? You know, three of them might not be doable. Like a lot of the stuff that, that when I work my way backwards, I'm talking about this on my blog a lot, sometimes when you work your way backwards and you say, well, let's think about five things that could solve this problem. You might not be able to do the top three. Maybe, maybe one of the top three is, you know, for me, you know what would be ideal for me? Ideal for me would be to hire probably five people. One person to just literally follow me around and be in my house and, and do all of my errands for me. Now, it's feasible for me to have a new assistant this year, right? One, but I have to share her with other people. Um, I would love to hire uh, just a lot of people and my productivity would go up tremendously, but that's cart before the horse because when you're in a startup and you choose to not get, you know, a lot of investment money and you choose to not say, okay, I'm going to take, a, you know, these millions of dollars and then hire a ton of people, you know, if you choose not to go that route, which we're not, then you have to be, you know, very judicious about when you hire, where you spend your money. And you have to look at things and go, what's a nice to have? What's a need to have? Okay. A nice to have for me 
which would have tremendous results would be uh, several assistants, okay? Um, online, I mean, I would like a sales team of probably 50 people. That's how much work we have to do, but I can't do that. So you have to look at what you can do. But what I do know about myself this year in everything, in pretty much every area of my life, in stuff that I've had to do, needed to do around my house, um, attacking my workload, everything has taken a lot longer or gotten me more frustrated or made me feel, I've allowed it to feel, made me feel more overwhelmed because I get distracted or I allow myself to get distracted. I multitask, I do too many things at once, and then I'm never fully focused or fully present on any one thing. And it's really hard to do things well when you're doing 20 things at once or if your mind is elsewhere. And then quite frankly, because you're always spread so thin, you you just, you get tired easy. You know what I'm saying? Think about it from a physical standpoint. You know, I used to say to somebody, some of my friends when I was talking about this, I said, I feel like I've been running on a treadmill and, and you know, my, my speed is slowing down, but I there's no end in sight, I have to keep going. Well, think about it. If you're running on the treadmill and you're trying to, you know, make yourself a cappuccino and you're trying to read your emails and you're trying to, you know, Instagram and shoot a video and cook breakfast on the side, you know, something's gonna burn. The, the stuff on the stove is gonna burn, your, your laptop's gonna fall, you know, something's gonna go. And then because you're trying to fix it all at once, you're just going to continue. You're either going to fall down on the treadmill and skin your knees, and then you're going to need to deal with that because you haven't been paying attention. And then everything else is going to fall off, and then you're going to then you're going to be more scrambled. This is a crazy explanation, but it kind of is getting to the point. You know, you, you fall down on the treadmill, you skin your knees, so then you have to get somebody to to fix the knee, and then you continue to run, and then you realize that oh, you know, the breakfast I was working on it's burned on the stove, so now I have to start over. So it's going to cost me more money because so everything is contingent on everything else. And when you when you allow yourself to continue to get distracted, and when you allow yourself to just react to things versus, this is what I started to say, developing a blueprint, developing a plan, taking control of your life and deciding, you know, what makes the most sense to do in what order. People always say, I don't have the time. Everybody says that. And, and then, you know, we've all seen that phrase, um, whether it's on Pinterest or, or Instagram, where it says, you know, make the time. And somebody might look at that and go, how can you make the time? I don't have time. I guarantee you, you have time for the things that are most important to you. But that's, something's got to give. You know, do you want to sit in front of your TV and watch four hours of television every night? Or do you want to maybe take two hours away from that and say, what, what's that doing for my life? You know, I enjoy watching Shark Tank like the next guy. I'm addicted to it. But you know, do I want to sit and watch other people get on with their lives and, and do something great? Or do I want to do something great myself? Um, it's all about balance. It's all about, and, and for me, here's the other thing. This is about getting distracted. I realized that even when I would come out here to watch TV and relax, I wasn't even focused on relaxing because I, I, I had a mindset of, I'm so distracted, I'm so busy, I'm so overwhelmed. Again, these are the, you know, the things I was constantly saying to myself. I'm so busy, I'm never gonna get caught up, I have so much to do, I really don't have time to take a break, but I'm exhausted, so if I don't take a break, I, you know, I'm gonna get worn down, so blah, blah, blah. I can't take myself on vacation right now, so I'm gonna just let, at least let myself sit down and watch a movie. And then I'd sit down to watch a movie, and I'd have my iPhone, I'd have my Samsung, I'd have my um, laptop or, or the, the tablet, and I'd start you know, multitasking. And, and some of it was just sheer pleasure stuff. Pinning, you know, going on Pinterest, going on Facebook, going on Twitter, whatever. Stuff that you think, well, that's not you know, a work task or whatever. Here's what happens. I get to the end of the movie. It's the end of the movie and I'm looking up going, I don't, I didn't even watch the movie because I'm texting people, I'm catching up with my friends, I'm, you know, and again, you might watch this and go, what's bad about that, Kelly? You know, it's, you were just having fun. The thing is, is I'm not really fully um, enjoying it. I, I'm not really fully, I mean, it's not that you need to fully embrace um, Facebook. I mean, that's one of the, the brilliant things about Facebook. You can you can look there and catch up with any of your friends at any time. It's always there, right? But if I don't even allow myself to shut my brain off and stop feeling that I have to respond to people immediately on by texting them, 
I mean, that's one of the reasons I got a second phone line. So it's private and only so many people know that phone number. Um, and with this, now what I've started doing during the day, during the work days, this was a huge step for me in not being distracted. And you might think it's such a simple thing. I can't tell you the impact it had on my work day. I just turned the ringer off. Some of you might have done this already, but my problem is I'd be sitting there working away and whoever it was, whether it's my friend Sherry or Jessica or um, work people or um, friends or my mom or whoever, somebody would text me and immediately I'm working and I'm like, what do they say? What's he saying? And then, you know, because I have custom ringtones for people. So automatically it's making me stop. It's making me start to think about that person. And more often than not, I'm going to pick it up and go, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then I start, so it's, you know, four minutes texting with that person, two minutes here, and then it's all day. And every single time you stop working on what you're working on, then very many times, that probably is not how I wanted to start that sentence, so many times, I cannot tell you, getting distracted will, is the biggest time waster. I've told you this before. There, there are times where if you don't schedule out what you want to accomplish that day, um, you can allow yourself to get so overwhelmed and then you'll, you'll be reactive. You'll go, if, you've, if, you're, if you're like me, you've done this. I'd be in my office and be like so tired of doing this and this and this and I've been on phone calls all day. So then I'm like, well, let me look at Pinterest. Let me look at Facebook. Let me read, read a blog or so. Soon enough, I look up. And I might have even already like, say it was an afternoon, I might have changed and gotten in my workout clothes. And all of a sudden, I cannot tell you how many times this happened. I look up and I think it's 3.30 and it's six o'clock. So if you think that time can't all of a sudden escape you when you allow yourself to get distracted and never really focus on anything because you don't have a plan and therefore you feel overwhelmed, your days will escape you. And days will turn into weeks, weeks will turn into months, months will turn into years, whatever. So. You know, you have to figure out what some of your tendencies are to get distracted and then work around that. Like right now, I knew I wanted to shoot this video, so I came in here and I shot it, and then I'm turning this off, I'm turning my text off, and I'm sitting down. This is why I set this stuff on my counter last night. I set out my Tony stuff because I'm like, I want to get through this program because it's done so much for me already. I want to get through it, you know, and then I'm going to schedule time. So I'll probably, you know, revisit this every quarter because they're good principles to keep feeding yourselves. Just like great books that I've read, you know, from um, John Maxwell or um, Jack Canfield or whatever. Um, some of the new books that I'm reading right now, they're amazing. You don't just learn something once. You've got to keep kind of refeeding yourself. Repetition is the key. So. I know that this ended up being a 22 minute vlog and I'm sorry about that, um, but really I don't know when I ever shoot short vlogs and this is really an important point. When you're distracted and when you multitask, if I can tell you to let go of one thing, it's multitasking. Um, especially with it's social media, and social media is my business people, but let yourself enjoy your Instagram time. And, and that's it, you know? Let yourself enjoy watching your, your television show. Maybe you don't need to watch three or four shows every night, okay? We watch way too much television. Somebody put a stat up about how much, uh, so many hours of television that kids are watching today, and we wonder why we have this obesity epidemic. Allow yourself X amount of whatever it is. You know, pull back the reins. I remember my mom, when we were growing up, we, we knew that we were allowed to have soda one night a week. Like Friday night was when we could have soda. The rest of the week we had to have milk, but with dinner. So we would look forward to you know when we had it. It wasn't unlimited. So much of what we allow ourselves right now is unlimited. And when you're unlimited and spread too thin and not focused and distracted, you're not going to get anywhere. You'll just tread water. See if you can figure this stuff out for yourself. What distracts you, what you're doing that could change your your focus, and that's going to be one of the things that will really, I promise you, be a game changer in your fitness goals, in your work, in your relationship, really just in everything. You, you will no longer feel overwhelmed because you'll say, you know what, I can give myself an hour to clean my house, or I can give myself 45 minutes to go run errands. I tested this the other day, I gotta go, I gotta shut up. You know how I, I always talk about how I dread going grocery shopping. I had to go get uh, stuff at Walmart because my, you know, my new diet starts tomorrow and I needed stuff like steak and avocado and stuff for salad and blah, blah, blah. And I, Walmart is so close to my house. 
So I timed myself, and I remember I looked and I said, okay, assuming it takes me five minutes there, I'm going to see if I can be there and back in 40 minutes. I was there and back, finished everything in 32 minutes, okay? Surprise yourself. When you go in and you focus, instead of thinking in your head, oh, it's going to take me so long, I'm never going to get home, blah, blah, blah. Change your mind, change your attitude, change your focus, and you will be like, oh, snap, I did that. It wasn't that bad. See what I'm saying? It's just changing your perspective.